Okay guys, we have seen the basic properties of gram-positive rods and Corinebacterium diphtheri is among one of the uh, is one of the member of gram-positive rods. So let me write it here. This is one of the member of gram-positive rod shaped bacteria. Okay, and it is also free living one, and this gra it is uh, sharing all this character of gram-positive rods. That means usually Corinebacterium diphtheri. If I draw the structure of Corinebacterium, it will look something like this. So it's, it's it will look like this. Okay, so this kind of bacteria, it's a rod-shaped, and it is having all these things like that. Okay, and 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 an important thing about Corinebacterium diphtheri because it is it is clinically significant. It is clinically very much significant because it causes diphtheria causes diphtheria disease okay so that's why it is clinically significant and usually this corinebacterium diphtheri can cause different types of uh, infections the infections corinebacterium diphtheri usually causes uh, majorly of two different type one is the upper respiratory tract infection and second one is the cutaneous uh, kind of infection so let me write it here so the infection uh, cause one is the upper upper respiratory tract so upper respiratory tract respiratory tract infection and infection and it also causes it also causes cutaneous kind of infection cutaneous infection okay so these are the two modes of infection caused by uh, Corinebacterium diphtheri. Now, in this upper respiratory tract infection caused by Corinebacterium diphtheri, in this case, it is it is strictly local kind of infection. So, it is a kind of local infection. It is a, a localized kind of infection. Now, in this infection, uh, it it produces a distinctive thick grayish and adherent kind of exudate. It is uh, it is also called a pseudo membrane uh, made up with this uh, slime uh, layer or made up with that uh, mucus layer. Okay, and that is composed of cell debris. Now it is making that grayish. So let me write it: grayish pseudo membrane. Grayish pseudo membrane like uh, something. And in this case, this this is filled with cellular debris. Cellular debris. Okay. It contains cellular debris in it. Now it coats the whole throat and may extend into the nasal passages or downward in the respiratory tract where it exudes sometimes uh, obstructs the airway. So it, it eventually leads to the airway construction sometimes. So airway construction. Construction. Airway constriction. Okay, actually. Airway constriction. Okay, so these are the different uh, kind of... Uh, what you can see symptoms that we can get airway constriction as well as it it it, it influence it, it it actually swells uh, the tonsillar area and all these regions right now another important thing is that this this uh, scordinobacterium diphtheri mostly they they are placed in a nasal cavity and also they are placed in our in, in in mouth and upper respiratory tract and nasal cavity so there is a chance of a spreading of this disease chance of spreading is via via air so via air and it resides in nasopharynx so let me let me it resides in nasopharynx so this is the residual place for my corinebacterium diphtheri and they can uh, transfer uh, transform the cells that, that are present there they can kill those cells and as a result of killing of those cells there are cellular debris that will be stored and making this gray pseudo membrane and it can construct uh, it, it can construct air, airway in, in some cases okay now as the disease progresses the generalized symptoms start to occur now in this case of generalized sim symptoms start to occur and the symptoms start to occur due to the destruction of cell and the destruction of cell is caused using it is caused using or with the help of of a toxin it is called the exotoxin it is a severe exotoxin produced by corinebacterium diphtheri it is called uh, diphtherial toxin or diphtheri toxin it is, it is a two component toxin made up with a and b we'll be learning detail of this toxin uh, further but but uh, let me tell you this this kind of cellular destruction cellular destruction is caused by 
that kind of or that type of exotoxin so it is by exotoxin okay so it's a cytolytic kind of toxin this exotoxin actually blocks the protein synthesis inside the cell as a result cell can't grow right so this is the basic part and and the second part of the infection which is the cutaneous kind of infection now in this kind of infection a puncture wound or a cut in the skin can result in the introduction of this diphtheria so that's why the wound that that we can have or, or any kind of cut uh, in, in your hand or your cut in, in, in membrane or in what you can say in skin can lead up to the entry of this uh, cornebacterium diphtheria into subcutaneous tissue and as it is entering into the subcutaneous tissue, it, it, it starts to damage it using exotoxin secretion. We call it cutaneous kind of infection. Now, in this kind of infection, in this kind of infection, so it is, let me write, it is via wound. And how? Because this, this kind of bacteria can be present in air. So, let me write, it can present in air. So, from air, from air, it can easily spread inside wound. Now, as it is put in, inside wound, it will fairly can enter enter into the subcutaneous sub sorry subcutaneous layer of skin. So, as it is entered into subcutaneous layer, it will start secreting this exotoxin, and secretion of this kind of exotoxin lead to the destruction and necrosis necrosis of tissue in this layer okay so these are the different stages of diphtherial poisoning uh, okay so these are the different stages now what are the pathogenicity that are carried out using corinebacterium diphtheria so let me talk about the